so what I have here is I think I'd I thought I'd like to show you what I've made uh, when I started to do egg tempera and um, painting icons uh, very exciting stuff I I've got so much stuff in my studio I thought I'm not going to go and buy anything else I want to use up what I've got so um, I had some uh, material that I had dyed over I, I had dyed and was left over this was a scrap material I had this EO jersey that I bought years ago I don't know why it's all gone out of fashion the color now but I didn't want to throw it out but I wanted to use it so I I bought some little bottles and I thought well I'm not going to put them in a box I'm just going to make a fabric container of some sort but as I went through the um, egg tempera and, uh, and what I needed to do for egg tempera and what tools I needed I found that I was able to um, grow this bag organically and I'll show you in a minute so these are just ties which I undo on the sides on the ends so I'll undo it um, and then that opens up and we have in here um, some more uh, fabric that I had dyed previously but this is a little bit different so I have to sort of open it up over like this it opens out and there we have all sorts so these little containers in here they are just little holes with materials they they hold in the the paint nicely um, I've got to make sure I keep that upright because the if the pigment gets on the top of these little bottles in here it's it's dirty when you open it up and need to mix your egg uh, emulsion with your pigment or water um, so what I've got in in the bag here is I'll just move through it can't move out very much but so we have here is a little a little cloth pad which I've made with some leftover cotton of an old sheet and I filled that with hobby fill and we use that to polish gold and gold uh, in gold um, gilding so that's all that, that belongs in that little pocket in this little pocket I have got just some cloths some paper uh, makeup pads which I use for mopping up colors so I could probably just take this anywhere really um, if I needed to. Um, in the back I have a, another big pocket so I keep in here the my a visual journal which is just Bristol vellum paper uh, Bristol smooth surface. Here is my gold leaf packet here which I won't open up but it's a little bit screwing you up for lack of not having anywhere else flat to keep it. And then I have a little um, travel easel I mean a pallet so I can take that as well when I go somewhere so then also it's also in the top here I have pocket these are two pockets that I took from an old shirt so it was 100% cotton, it was an old shirt for my sons, I unpicked the pocket, I didn't want to throw out material and it's worked out great as a little spot to keep my brushes so I just sewn that onto the top so I just sewed so that uh, as a flat piece of material sewed it all together and just sewed that on the top and then I connected that to the um, to this uh, jersey so I've got in here I've got three pencils I've got an HB, an F and a H, there's the quite um, hard pencils, like a fine line on the board. I also have my smaller brushes. I've got some bigger brushes to give, put in uh, large wipes, but I find that you need a good liner brushes. So I've got a number of good fine liner brushes here, which I do use a lot. And I use these little ones quite a lot as well. These are, this is a 10 over zero, 20 over zero, little fine short um, tipped brushes. They're great for um, doing painting eyes, fine detail in the icons. 
And then we also have in here, I've got a blunt and empty um, pen, which I use to mark with a uh, graphite paper and tracing paper onto the board. Um, it's just handy, it's just a handy little blunt tool. You can use an embossing tool as well. Another thing which is important for, um, for, for doing icons is it's quite geometric. So you need to have um, a compass, a short ruler, a tractor. It's good to get those 45 degree angles with, the, with the, that, with the tractor. That's just a foldable ruler. Get that at an um, office store, um, stationery store. Um, a little rubber, I use that every so often as well. So they're quite handy, keeps that in there. You've got to have that if you're doing up a new, um, a new icon. And down the bottom here is just a sharpener for the pencils. And I usually have in there a, an eraser, which I haven't got in there today. And then over this side, um, these are the pigments. And it's quite a lot. This is... Um, a usual color, um, colors that we generally use. I've got them in a in in a color wheel um, organization. So we've got the reds, um, browns, oranges, um, red, orange, orange, yellow, 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 green, uh, green, green, blue, blue. Um, and blue violety, I think that comes back a bit here as well, and the two um, neutrals here, which is titanium white and ivory black. And I've got these, um, I've got the, and I, I, I mark them at the top. My teacher did say, look, you know, if you're going to keep them in this organisation, put a little dab of colour on the top, which I have done, and I've covered those with um, some some varnish so that the colour doesn't come off. It stays there quite well. I've just used a um, Dymo um, label maker. You can, don't even need that. You can just use a bit of sticky plastic uh, or paper, which I've done for these as well. And I've bought, and I, it helps me organise it. So, I, I, for example, with this Vivianite, which, which is a lovely Russian one, that's what it looks like, which is lovely. Um, and I've just written on the bottle as well. So if you're using them and you've taken the lid off and they're separate, you know at least where to put the, um, what belongs to what.